Police officers can test if a suspected drunk driver is legally drunk or not by using what's called a breathalyzer test. A breathalyzer is a device used to determine blood alcohol concentration, or BAC for short, by measuring the amount of alcohol in a sample of your breath. But did you know that the breathalyzer test is based on an oxidation reaction of alcohol in chemistry? In the 1950s, Dr. Robert Borkenstein of the Indiana State Police invented the breathalyzer, a type of breath alcohol testing device used by law enforcement agencies today. People commonly say breathalyzer when they refer to an alcohol test. However, breathalyzer is actually a brand name. I wonder if you knew that. So, how can a person's breath show how much that person drank? Well, alcohol that a person drinks gets absorbed from the mouth, throat, stomach, intestines, and into the bloodstream. As the blood goes through the lungs, some of the alcohol moves across the membrane of the lungs' air sacs, called alveoli, and into the air. This is because alcohol is volatile and evaporates from a solution. The concentration of the alcohol in the alveolar air is proportional to the concentration of the alcohol in the person's blood. As the alcohol in the alveolar air is exhaled, it can then be detected by the breath alcohol testing device. Instead of having to draw a driver's blood to test for the alcohol level, an officer of the law can test the driver's breath on the spot and instantaneously know if there is a reason to arrest the driver. Please note that the word alcohol in chemistry means an organic compound that contains an OH group. However, as far as the public is concerned, alcohol refers to one specific type of alcohol, namely ethanol. It is ethanol that we consume in wine or beer, and when we measure blood alcohol concentration, we are really measuring the blood ethanol concentration. So, what is the chemistry behind the breathalyzer? Let's look at one type of breathalyzer called a fuel cell breathalyzer. It contains two platinum electrodes, anode and cathode, wired to a meter and an electrolyte between the electrodes. So when you blow into a breathalyzer, ethanol in your breath is oxidized at the anode and forms acidic acid. It is an oxidation reaction. The electrons produced in this reaction flow through a wire from the platinum electrode. The wire is connected to an electrical current meter and to a cathode on the other side. Meanwhile, at the cathode, oxygen from the atmosphere is reduced. It is a reduction reaction. If you'd like to know more about oxidation reduction reaction or balancing chemical equations, please watch my previous videos called Oxidation versus Reduction and How to Balance Chemical Equations in Four Steps. I'll post a link below. These two coupled reactions produce an electrical current between the electrodes that is proportional to the amount of ethanol present in your breath. A higher current means a higher ethanol concentration in your breath. Therefore, breathalyzers do not measure the blood alcohol concentration, which can only be done with a blood test, but estimate it based on the ethanol concentration in your breath. Because the alcohol concentration in the breath is proportional to that in the blood, you can figure the BAC by measuring alcohol of the breath. The ratio of breath alcohol to blood alcohol is 2100 to 1. This means that 2100 milliliters of alveolar air will contain the same amount of alcohol as 1 milliliter of blood. The legal standard for drunkenness across the United States and Canada is 0.08% nowadays. It means that there are 0.08 grams of alcohol per 100 milliliters of blood. This is the level at which criminal code impaired driving charges can be laid. However, it is important to note that even small amounts of alcohol can impair driving ability. According to American Medical Association, a person can become impaired when the blood alcohol level hits 0.05%. Here's an interesting question for you. Can you beat a breathalyzer test? Well, one action that may reduce your BAC on the breathalyzer test is a hyperventilation technique before taking the test. What you are doing here is really replacing the alcoholic gas in your lungs with as much fresh air as possible. This may reduce your BAC test value by up to 10%. So, if 
you're very near the BAC limit, you might be able to beat the test. But if you're seriously drunk, all you're likely to do is make yourself dizzy so you would fail all of the other tests, such as walking a line or touching your nose with your finger, etc. The bottom line is that the safest way always is to separate drinking from driving entirely. If you are going to drink alcohol, don't risk a license suspension or even worse, a crash. Plan an alternate transportation home, please. That's it for today. Thank you for watching.